Hey everybody, my name is Chrome and I'm a professional. Yes, I got my professional license out of a Cracker Jack box and everything I've learned was at the Academy. Yes, the Academy of YouTube. <laughs> whatever, still, I can call myself whatever I want and I want to be identified as a professional so we're going to go with that in today's video. So today we're pulling out my front seat because it's got a droop. Literally, I sit in that thing and I'm automatically one foot shorter. Sure, I'm getting older. Hold on a second, maybe I am just one foot shorter. Anyway, everything we do around here is real professional. Safety first. Yep, and my camera guy is drunk. Come on, guys, stop drinking on the job. Okay, get up. Okay. Right, we're gonna take the base off the seat here. This here is one of my favorite tools I've bought in the shop recently. It's a little Milwaukee ratchet. I love that thing. We try to keep all our camera movements all cinematic. Yes, that's a cinematic camera movement. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna shut up now. So the bottom of this driver's seat, you can see the foam is all broken. This foam was actually purchased about a year ago um, when I redid the seat covers before. But I never really noticed that the, uh, the spring thing is gone in here. So there used to be a big spring system in there that all of these things connected to. So recently when I put my thing back together, I just used speaker wire. I didn't know what else to do, but I've come up with an idea. Yeah, the speaker wire idea was dumb. Dum, da, dum, dum. So I'm using aircraft cable. So my thought was, is I'm gonna keep running these things back and forth. So this one's connected here, winds through and goes to here. And uh, I probably could have did this one a little bit tighter, but I'm gonna put one on every one and just keep winding them around until I feel like I got a good solid base. So what I'm using here is aircraft cable. YouTube videos up there to make sure that I do this right. And I went out and bought myself a bunch of the little, I think these are called swags or something like that. All the stuff we're gonna need to do this and a huge roll of uh, aircraft cable. All right, let's get on to the next one. Okay, the little tool, it's got a little cutter here on the end. Bada boom. So how this works is pretty simple. You slide one of those through you flip it over, slide her through, and bada boom. Just like that, you take this little tool, and slide her in there. And you crimp. Move it down a little bit farther, and you crimp again. All right, there's one end done. Okay, so we're gonna start this one over here. Okay, yank this tight. All right, I think we're getting somewhere. You know, I could have went to an auto wrecker and found that actual proper piece that's supposed to be there, or I went online and bought the actual piece, but what kind of fun is that? When I can go out, go to Amazon, buy this cool little tool, learn how to make an aircraft cable, and use this as my first experiment. Because if these cables can hold my 220 pound big butt, then I know if I ever need to make an aircraft cable for something that needs to, you know, for safety reasons or whatever, then uh, then I know I'm good at it. See, professional. Oh yeah. What a mess. Oh yeah, I feel that. It's uh, kind of a ridiculous mess. Oh, springy, springy. Alright buddy, 
Daddy, I'm not going anywhere. It's okay. It's okay, bud. Did you just jump over there, bro? So the other week we had a lot of rust on here and I painted it with a rust encapsulator. I probably should have did more work to it, but uh, it's dry underneath there. So I have a plan for my floor. We're not gonna deal with it quite yet. Um, I really need to take a look at the passenger side. So I think I'm gonna one day pull that seat out, pull up all this flooring address any rust that needs to be done, repaint the flooring properly, and then put an insulation barrier so the cold doesn't touch the rubber here and then cause condensation. And I think for this one, I'm gonna go a different route than I did in the ambulance. So the ambulance, I put the Dynamat down because I knew the floor had no rust. I put the Dynamat down and then Dyna liner, which is like, I think there's a half an inch of Dyna liner on there, a nice thick, closed cell rubber or closed cell foam, whatever it's called on top of that. So what I might do in here is just do a budget non-porous material. So Lauren was telling me that um, you can buy like that garage matting, you know, the matting that links together that look like puzzle blocks. Well, I guess they're water resistant. They don't hold water. So if any water would be around them, they just pull around them and not soak into the mat. So what I might do on here is do the budget route. Pull this out, clean it up, paint the floor, throw that cheaper foam flooring down um, that Lauren was telling me about, and then uh, recover this. Then we got two experiments on the go. <laughs> That's what us YouTubers are here for, to try things out and let you guys know if they do and do not work. Okay, let's put the seat in. Let's see. Oh, that looks so much better. It was like dipping way down before. Oh, that's comfortable. Hey, you would have never known that there's not a, well, technically it wasn't a spring before. It was a pretty much like that. It was just like a wired little grid system that connected to the springs themselves. But uh, that worked out pretty good. That's the foot that's sore today. Oh, I have a problem. You, you, you can't get me to stop moving around. <laughs> Always gotta do something. So you guys caught it in a video, I appreciate that, that there was a hole in my WeatherTech mat in the corner. So I actually used some automotive seam sealer meant for, for uh, vehicle bodies on the top and on the bottom here, and it's holding out. So I guess what's happened over time is just, I've pushed it into a corner and it actually busted itself a hole. It's all good now. So there's a vehicle dweller in Vancouver. His name is Gus that needs a little bit of assistance. So I will leave Gus's information and stuff down below in this video if you guys want to reach out. I'm not sure what else he needs, but right now uh, we're getting him set up for some electrical stuff. Jay, the electrician guy that worked on my ambulance is gonna help Gus with some of the install stuff if time permits. And I've been putting together a donation pile for Gus and uh, we're taking it over to him probably in the next day or two days or three days, something like that. So for Gus, I got two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. I got a fuse, blade fuse block, a couple of puck lights, like the ones I have in my van, 12 volt ones, some a &L fuse blocks, there's two of them here, and a Renogy DC to DC and MPPT solar charge controller, which allowed him to charge from his his starting battery too as well while he drives and a switch panel so we can control all of his lights and stuff like that. Uh, Gus has bought himself an inverter already and this is uh, just to kind of help the guy out a little bit. So don't worry guys, I'm coming over there soon, probably in the next couple of days. I'll fire you off a text message when I know I'm on the way and find out where you're at. But Gus just got into his van. Uh, he notified me yesterday that he is officially now out of the home that he was in, I think it was like a care home of some kind, and, or a hospital or something, and he's officially in his new van. He is in a wheelchair and has a wheelchair lift on the back of the van that he just bought, but it's got nothing inside of it. So um, 
I'll run the camera when I'm there too. He's no stranger of being on my channel. Gus was actually on my channel quite a bit when I first started way back in the day when I used to have a disco bear in my van, that van. <laughs> that very van, when it looked, it didn't, it wasn't lifted. It didn't have any roof racks or nothing. It looked like it, just a regular old car, uh, cargo van. Gus was in my stuff from way, way, way back in the day. So I got everything for Gus all loaded up here. I think we're gonna make a trip out into the mainland. We well, might as well get Gus all set up and stuff before, uh, before I get too busy over here on the island and don't have the opportunity to make another trip back to the mainland. So we're gonna take care of that stuff probably, maybe tomorrow morning, we'll see how my foot feels. Foot pending, Gus, foot pending. <laughs> it's feeling actually not too bad today, actually. I removed the speakers out of the doors on the ambulance because I'm putting a sound system in that thing. The first step of the sound system is replacing what was in the door. Inside of here where the factory speaker was will be a replacement driver in here. This will be a mid-bass driver. And then up in here we'll be mounting a tweeter just like I did in my van. I have tweeters put into this little this little uh, snap panel right there, uh, giving me a mid-bass and a driver. And we have tons of room this time. Look at all that space. We got tons of room to put some subwoofers in here. I haven't decided on that part of it yet, but for right now, I wanna get these door panels finished up and the new door panels put on the front. Um, one thing we still need to figure out is how to get rid of these switches because the new doors have these ones. Um, so I need to find the wiring plugs for the back of these things, kind of like all this stuff here, because this one didn't come with the plugs. And we need those plugs in order to connect these wires into these wires. And um, I know I was watching online, there's some changes to the wiring things between this switch and this switch in order for these two to work, but I guess they do work. A little bit of finessing, but thankfully I've got Jay on our side here, so we don't gotta worry about the electrical. Jay can do his research on that one to figure out what wires need to go to what in order to make the new ones connect. Or I somehow take this, cut this section out, rip those out and connect this into there somehow. I don't want, I don't want to think about this stuff right now. So I heard from Mr. Gus in a bus slash van. <laughs> he was telling me that he is officially living in his van and he never got the chance to get around to install an inverter. So he went out and bought himself an inverter for his van because he needed a way to just run it off the dashboard. Oh, got another package on its way. Heck yeah. So he needed an inverter because he has a, an electric wheelchair that he has to charge. If his electric wheelchair doesn't get any power, then he can't go out and get groceries or get out of his vehicle at all for anything. So um, now that he's in his van, I decided I'm just gonna jump on the first ferry tomorrow morning. We're gonna head over to the mainland, deliver Gus, all the batteries and the electronic stuff. And then uh, whenever Jay gets some time, he's gonna go over there and help him do the install on all of those items and get him completely squared away and charging on that electric chair, which is awesome. Okay, what package is coming in? Package is leaving Toronto on its way here from Crutchfield, which is a car stereo store. So, uh, looks like my speakers are on the way. <laughs> that was quick, I just ordered them today. Hey buddy, you ready to go? I'm gonna hit the road, pal. Going to town, catch the ferry in the morning maybe. Whoa. I gotta fix that rattle. It's my heat shield around my muffler. Oh, this seat feels good. Oh, heck yes. <laughs> oh, success. Are you ready, buddy? Hey, you ready, Cruzy? <sighs> I feel like today was, today was quite productive. All right, you guys, maybe come on over and uh, push one of those two buttons there. Go subscribe to Cruzy. Join us on Patreon or Patreon or Cruzy. <laughs> whatever one's there, uh, or click that video in between. 
Peace out, you guys. See you soon.